for our bank reconciliation, we see that we've got a balance for our bank and we've got a balance for our company. Those two balances typically will be different and it can be due to timing issues as we'll see with the bank or it can be that there are items that have not been recorded yet for the company. So going down the list on page 258, we see a variety of items. And I've separated these out between the bank side and our company side. And so for the bank, we see that we're going to start with that ending balance that shows on the bank statement. To that, we will add the deposits in transit. It's just a timing issue that if, for example, at my bank, the bank closes at 3.30 and any deposits made 3.30 or after are recorded the next banking day. So if I take a deposit at 3.31, it doesn't show up today. It shows up tomorrow or the next banking day. So with that, those are simply timing issues. The same with our outstanding checks. Unfortunately, those checks will clear the bank and as a result, a reduction to our cash as shown on that bank statement. We simply need to now identify that that bank balance does not have those included, but it should. We can also have errors that are either a plus or a minus uh, on that bank total, ultimately getting an adjusted bank balance. For our company side, we have that ending balance that shows in the general ledger for our cash. To that, we will add any notes that were collected by the bank for us and we find out by that statement that comes with the bank. We see that there potentially would be interest that we have earned for allowing someone else to use our money. So that would be interest revenue. Unfortunately, sometimes there is a charge by the bank or a fee for services that they complete for us. So if they've collected any of those notes for us, I'm sure that they're not going to do it for free. Instead, there is going to be a charge of some kind. Another item that we might have would be a deposit of a customer check that there's not sufficient funds, NSF, to cover that check. And as a result, we made the deposit and now we need to remove it. It becomes an accounts receivable rather than a payment on their account. As a result, we will have our adjusted ledger balance. We recognize that in this, the errors that might see for a company, a deposit is typically a plus to the cash. So we, we have to determine is that deposit too high or too low. If it's too low, we add more cash in. If the deposit was too high, pull it back out. It was too much. For our checks, unfortunately, normally that's a reduction to our cash. And so if we wrote a check and made an error, recorded it not quite enough, we need to take additional dollars out. If it was for too much, we need to add some back. So as we see from this, we have a relationship of our numbers from the bank to the company. And now we're going to take a look at an actual bank reconciliation. Now my recommendation is to do these columns, one with the bank, one with the company. Those are the items that affect the bank balance and these are the items that affect the company balance. From here, once we've gotten these adjusted balances the same, then we're ready to take it to the bank, actual bank reconciliation schedule or form. There is a relationship of these numbers, as we will see. The bank statement balance, and we add to it any deposits that are in transit, 
Therefore, this total right here, 3994, is the total of that beginning balance, 3742, plus those deposits in transit. So the implication with this is that the amount of deposits in transit would be $252. In our second missing number, we see that we have these three checks added together to give this total here of 842. And so this 842, the outstanding checks, is a reduction. But first we need to determine, well, what is the total for those? So 208 for check number 211 plus our B plus the 309 gives us 842. So then we do the algebra subtracting 208 from both sides, subtracting 309 from both sides, such that B, 325. So now we have 252 for here and we have 325 for right here. So as a result, our third item, our number C, is this guy. We've got the plus side for our bank reconciliation and here's a minus. So to get number C, we have 3994 and we'll subtract those outstanding checks of 842. Balance as a result of that, 31352. Now ultimately, this 3152 is what we need to have over on the company side as well. So let's take a look for the company. In number D, right here, we have that balance in the ledger currently plus the note collected by the bank. So 2811 plus 429 equals our D. When we add those two together, we get 3240. Our next item is labeled as number E. We have two items that are being deducted from this plus total up here. The total for those deductions is $88. So E plus this $72 gives us $88. As a result, E must be 16 right here. Our final item, number F here at the bottom, it will be what we had for D, 3240, minus that $88 gives us F. So three, three, so as a result, it's my pen is not writing, so I'll add those in uh, manually within the recording. But with that, the final total comes out to 3152. So as you have questions in this with our bank reconciliation, let me know. Otherwise, we do recognize that bank reconciliation is one of the major components within the chapter.